What's good, world? It's your boy Gio, man. I'm back with another one, man. This one's crazy, man. This is about your boy Diddy, man. They said that his bodyguard, Ron, had passed away about a month ago. He was supposed to be coming forward to talk about some things. Just like this whole ordeal with Justin Bieber and the Diddy situation, allegedly, this is all allegedly, man, for entertainment purposes only. But, uh, yeah, Justin was caught up with someone that was trying to spill the tea, and he also got him alive as well. Um, Y'all see in the video. <laughs> but, yeah, they were talking about his bodyguard, man. His bodyguard was about to spill some tea as well, man. And uh, Gene Deal, he just needed to be careful. Jaguar Wright, she needed to be careful. You know, um, this is crazy, man, to, to hear this type of thing. And he was talking about it for quite some time, man. And uh, they said that he passed just like Kim Porter passed, man, with that pneumonia, man. So this is crazy, man. Like, it's too much going on right now. Even your boy Ray J. Ray J is coming out. He's talking about it as this. Just like he's a victim. I mean, you never know. I'm not sure. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say, and, and, and you know, but I'm going to keep it 50-50. Uh, that's something that we could talk about. Do y'all think Ray J was a victim as well? Because he's spilling a lot of tea, and um, it's coming out, man. And the bodyguard even said that, you know, this year was going to be a crazy year, man. And, you know, they're saying that the Amber Crime and Fitch CEO was Allegedly uh, tied to Diddy. Diddy uh, has about seven celebrities. That's what they saying that he has seven celebrities. He's gonna be telling on. Um, dude's not gonna be doing all that time. They trying to get him. I just tell y'all that he's not used to that type of environment. You know, his the room he's staying in is like the size. His doghouse is bigger than that. So, I'm just letting y'all know, man, and what he's used to and the food that he's used to and just a lifestyle he's not gonna stay in there due to maximum time so you know that's why he got blackmail on everyone and uh y'all gotta check this one out let me know what y'all think about this in the comments man hit them comments man let's talk about this and uh hit that subscribe button man hit that like button man like me up hype me up man appreciate all the love and support as always man to the next one man stay safe stay warm stay blessed stay happy and catch y'all on the next one i'm out Jay-Z and Puffy wanted Biggie killed. Bottom line. You don't have to believe me. Believe the facts. Here's a man that wanted to leave Bad Boy. He wanted to do his own thing. He mentioned several times how he was tired of being used and abused. That he was bigger than Bad Boy itself. Somebody. And we ain't going to call no more names dangled a bogus contract in front of his face so he wouldn't leave the company. How I know I was there. Another thing, Jay-Z wanted him out of the industry, period, so he could take over and be the biggest hip-hop artist around. And I wonder who's the biggest hip hop artist today. It's all business, folks. And unfortunately, you as a fan, most of you won't understand. But it was all about the business. And the two billionaires have done what they seeded to do. Yo, at Jetty's crib, damn. You can tell us in there, baby, so you make sure that, you know, when we do, we show them off tonight. I ain't gonna lie. I, and I don't apologize. We showing the fuck off tonight. Excellence, ah, take that. So, baby, yo, get him out the way, man. This shit is real. This is real. This shit ain't Instagram. This shit ain't motherfucking Instagram. This is real life. Yeah. Thank you. If you thankful, me, he gotta hear you though. You ain't got no time to be shy going in the 2021. You wanna scream and yell for him, but you want me, you wanna say thank you? Nah, thank you. Jamie
Jamie Foxx family reported this shit. What happened to Jamie? To the FBI. Naming Diddy some type of suspect in this case, y'all. For what's that going on with Jamie's body. And I wish Tyron would have verified it. Because Tyron don't know how to lie. His body language would have gave us the truth on it. And my only reason for bringing it up is because, and I hate being a conspiracy. I hate, and y'all just don't know how much I hate being a conspiracy. Because this shit is all conspiracy. But how did Kim Porter, how did Kim Porter supposedly get sick from pneumonia? <laughs> Now, Kim Porter was a druggie. I know it's bad talking about a dead person. Kim just used to lay up in the house, fucked up daily. Anybody that knows her, they know I ain't lying on her. She had a major drug issues. But with all this that's going on now, that's coming out, and if Jamie got in his bloodstream, the same thing that Kim Porter got or had in her bloodstreams and they can prove that from corner reports. Man. Puffy might be going to jail for murder. That's what a Homeland Security, a major FBI agent, a U.S. attorney should be assigned to. Checking Jamie Foxx blood, checking Kim Porter blood. Cause that cyanide, it's a, it's a drug out there that's a cyanide that makes you seem like you have the effects of, of pneumonia, which they're alleging that Kim died from. And we believe that's what got Jamie sick. I don't know y'all. I ain't here for snitching or telling. I ain't no law enforcement officer no more. But if a good cop is listening, you want a star here in your hat, in your cap? Investigate that. Patriots, I have this update, Justin. Someone in my comments, thank you, asked me, how did Uncle Ron die? I have some answers. Now, this is where it gets a little crazy. He died last month. He was only 59 years old, very young. Some people are swirly whirling around that he died of that same pneumonia that Kim Porter had. Hmm. Sounds a little bit shady. Sounds like maybe the diddler had him taken care of because here's something real crazy. I had myself and my people reach out to his family because his TikTok page is still active and people in the comments are asking, what happened to Uncle Ron? What happened? What is the family doing? Deleting all of the comments. If you go over to Uncle Ron's TikTok page, try this, Patriots. I did it. Say, what happened to Ron? How did he expire? They delete your question. Why? Because they want to keep their family members safe and everyone else in their life that they care about because the diddler is not done with his nastiness. Patriots, it is not safe for me to be spilling this tea. I will have another afternoon update this afternoon. Thank you very much. Secret Service Sam, over and out. Samson for president. Come to the after party what does Diddy have to do with Liam Payne's death? In recent days, the tragic passing of Liam Payne, former One Direction member, has sparked a wave of rumors and controversy, and one of the names being talked about is rapper Diddy. According to multiple sources, Diddy may not only be linked to the case, but Payne was reportedly about to expose explosive details regarding the dark secrets of the entertainment industry, with Diddy possibly involved. Additionally, hotel staff in Buenos Aires, where the incident took place, reported strange noises coming from Liam's room before his death. When the police arrived, they found a disturbing scene and a mysterious letter that could change the direction of the investigation. Some theories suggest that Liam Payne knew too much and was caught in a web of conspiracies, now threatening to silence those who come too close to the truth. With Diddy facing serious charges and international forces involved, the revelations surrounding Liam Payne 
Wayne's death are far from over. What other Hollywood and music industry secrets are yet to be uncovered? Want to dig deeper into the connection between Diddy and this tragedy? Go to the profile to watch part two before it's taken down. Breaking Diddy news, Diddy just outed and snitched on several people and the first one that's coming up is called Amber Crombie and Fitch. My question is, who's next to go down? So, so what we're talking about is not men who are gay, who don't want to be known as gay for whatever uh, cultural or personal reason. You're saying that there are people that people know who are big stars uh, who have been victimized or have had to consent to sexual uh, acts that they didn't want to, but that's the way it is in the industry, even man on man, man on woman, woman on woman, that it could go any way. It could go any way, and it's sad because, you know, you, you, you want to be in the entertainment industry, and if that's what you got to do, and that's not what you even like to do, and that's what you're made to do, it's insane. And it, it, it must be a crazy, like, mind trip, you know, after that happens. And I, and I know a few celebs that have been in that kind of crazy situation, and they haven't been the same since, you know? It's like, ask what we could do for our country, ask the country, like, or right now in this situation, I can't do that because all I would be thinking about is them thinking about my ass. Because you know why? Uh -huh. It drives them crazy because they want to stay number one. But they don't know that the last at first. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. The first show be last. Why I'm so serious now? Now I'm outside, <laughs> motherfuckers. Here's a shot. Deli on the killer. Oh, we the hard jack. Oh, salute, salute. 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 You and Didi, y'all almost had a fight at one of his parties before, right? So, we at the house. My brother's there. You know what I'm saying? A lot of music being played. Good time. Beautiful, beautiful time. Things are going on. And um, Diddy walked past and he, he almost slipped or stumbled or something. Like, like fell. And my brother is, a, you know, funny. So, he started laughing. Yeah, I, my, that's my brother. And he like, he like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I, I flash for a minute. I'm like, man, get your motherfucking hands off my motherfucking brother, my nigga. You don't know him, get your motherfucking hands off of him, you know what I'm saying? And it was the more people there, like some of his security and, you know, some French and my, all those guys is there. And I was just like, I was just like, look, I'm finna tear this whole motherfucker up. And I'm trying, I'm gonna tear this whole motherfucker up about my brother. You know what I mean? And so then at, from, from there, you know, I'm, I'm cut. Like, what the Nigga said, LA Wolf, you know, doing my tyrant shit, you know what I mean? And then, um, then Diddy, like, you know, he like, Playboy, let's just, let's, let's, let's just talk, let's just talk. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm listening. Well, nigga, what, what's, what's, what's going on? So, uh, me and, me and Diddy go around the corner. We in the kitchen. So we go around the corner, we chop it up. And he like, he apologized. We, we squashed it from there. Like, we, he apologized. He was like, my bad, my nigga. I just, I said, that's all I want. That's all I need to hear, my nigga. Like, I ain't, I don't want to push no, the envelope. Like, you said you, sorry, you apologize, cool. I just was confused that you grabbed my bro my brother. Like, nigga, like, you know, at that moment, I didn't see Puffy or Diddy. I, 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 I said, hey, my nigga. <laughs> with all due respect, I don't think, and, and good for me with that, even though I'm, it's almost like a self-deprecating, like, joke or whatever. Nobody's saying... Like, imagine if Diddy, and I want to name a couple of the other niggas who are allegedly gay. If they're sitting around the freak-off planning table, no one's going to be like, yo, which, which nigga we want to fuck this week? And somebody be like, let's fuck Ack. Like, nobody's going to say that. So it's like, maybe also I'm a little bit, like, prejudiced because, like, like none of these nobody's trying to fuck me my nigga like i'm sorry i'm good man no, i'm sorry i'm good right so it's like like you know i heard all these niggas was trying to i ain't gonna say the name because y'all gonna run a headline uh but but a couple of these r&b niggas you, you know them r&b niggas all them r&b niggas used to be showing their abs like washboard yeah they was trying like male executives trying to fuck them so again that's what they were into maybe i'm a little bit in disbelief of like sometimes how deep the rabbit hole is no diddy because like yeah, I'm hearing this shit third hand and I'm corroborating it behind the scenes whenever I can. I'm hearing multiple people tell me at times. 
But like, it's not like it's happened to me, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know I said like Diddy invited me to a party. Like, I don't think Diddy was trying to fuck me, my nigga. You know, what I mean? I'm just keeping it a bean. Like, I don't think none of these motherfuckers are trying to fuck me. I'm just keeping it a hundred, right? But I might just not be their type. You know what I mean? Like, shit. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm I'm trying so hard not to say like a few names, but uh, there's a there's a couple of R and B niggas that came in this game from what I heard completely straight. Now they gay as hell. Like, how the fuck did that happen? That's a little odd. How the hell when you was broken and I won't mention the place they from, you was niggas was saying you was the gangster nigga who sing. Now they say you the sweet nigga who got a boyfriend. Like how does that work? Like I don't know. So I don't know. So maybe, bro, I really don't be no. Anyway, of course, man. <laughs> yo, somebody say yo, act you jealous? You not they type? <laughs> yo, I mean, chat. Do you think it's a you, you think I should be jealous that nobody ever thought I was good enough to get fucked? Like, yo, I came in this shit independent. I'm climbing up the ranks. Nobody, nobody thought I was good to get fucked. Damn. I was gonna make a joke, but it's it's I'm too Jamaican and it's too gay. I can't make it. I can't, I can't make it. I was gonna be like, yo, nah, I can't make a joke. I can't make a joke. Now, I'm gonna say, but but I can't, nah, I'm not. Nah, okay, it's too gay. It's too gay. Like I, I couldn't go to Jamaica after I said that. Your own sexual gratification. <laughs> Somebody said, "Hey, yo." <laughs> For example, as I see, y'all went with the jokes with me too. Y'all in the joke. I was just thinking, I'm like, damn, everybody said I look like a chipmunk. Not one of these niggas saying, yo, "Look at this big cheek motherfucker right here." Maybe we could stuff a. <laughs> Not pause. 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 That was that's a joke, nigga. Employer. That's a joke. It's a joke. It's comedy hour. We're about to get into comedy hour. I'm getting a little bit sauce. Where we at? Three hours. This is when I get a little saucy, okay? No, uh, pause on the saucy. <laughs> That's when I get a little saucy. I feel like sometimes I shit on... I, I do shit on, like, conspiracy theories sometimes. Even though sometimes I'll entertain it, at, like, for a little bit, but not too much because I like to be based on reality. But also... I think the reason why I do shit on it is because I'm also looking at my experience, right? So, like, I, bro, I've, I do have a lot of these motherfucking secrets. Like, man, I know right now, chat, I got a list of people's, This peop, these people got herpes, these people got AIDS, this person cheating on his wife with this person, these are all the side chicks. Bro, I, trust me, when I look at all of this shit, I say, I'll be saying, listen, even if they, even if they don't like me, who would fuck with me? Because my whole entire job is to listen to the people you didn't pay off, the person who mad at you, your ex, your your ex lover, the nigga you fucked, but your people think you're straight. Like I've heard it all, and I usually sit back, corroborate shit, and I'm usually wait for the time that is public. That's when I come with it. That's when I be like, yo, wait, how you got some more? Inf no, no, it's public now. Now I can speak on it. I remember talking to Cardi B, and I told Cardi B, what I tell Cardi B, I said, what I say to her? I said, I said, I said, I would have never said nothing about Stefan Diggs if that shit wasn't private, if that was, shit wasn't public. Just being honest. Because I hear about things like this all the time. I do. I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have commented on it until I felt it hit public domain already. So I'm like, all right, niggas already know I'm cool. Even I don't know if they knew because I teased it. Or maybe like... These people poison people, bro. I've been poisoned three times. Why am I testing positive for cyanide? You feel me? Why am I getting... The, why do I have... I had pneumonia three times. So people like, man, why he breathe like that? Because I only got one lung. And then I had a car crash. I got one nostril permanently blocked. And I done had pneumonia three times. Somebody been trying to poison me. My, my my brother got poisoned with me. The little lady I was bodyguarding, she got poisoned. Like somebody is, is carrying on these antics. These is facts. Is there any idea why Diddy would want to poison Jamie, Jamie Foxx? You get called to testify if you on camera and some of this footage, <laughs> and you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself. It's a, it's a way, it's, it's ways in this industry people go about doing things. Just know I tested positive for cyanide three times. 
after drinking some bottles in the club. Clive Davis is the chief creative officer of Sony. And he owns Bad Boy Records, which is Diddy's essentially like music production company. Diddy answers to him because he pays Diddy. Michael Jackson, the day before he died, he was saying they, meaning Sony, wants me gone because they want to control my music. They want to control my IP. Latoya Jackson also said following Michael's death that Dr. Conrad Murray, who went to jail for prescribing Michael Jackson the drugs that, quote, caused his overdose, was just completely the fall guy. And she said that Michael told her that Sony wants him gone. I would be in L.A. and I would leave the next day. You know, I had a little joint in L.A. for a while. And the next day, and this happened more than once, nah. I, we're going to Jamie's yeah. house. Oh, What's going on there? Oh, we got to buy some party. We got to sign some form. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's private. Yeah, you only get yeah. some boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, but and I, I mean, was like, "What's going on up there? How many people <laughs> is up there?" I went and met Hugh Hefner at twenty four, twenty five, when the when the Playboy Mansion was still relevant, mm. like no camera phones. It was still fly. It was still private, and I never seen nothing like that. I, it, women had to actually send pictures in, and you get screened, and then you come in. I did get in the grotto with my girls. Uh, he he allowed us to get in the grotto. I had six girls with me. I said, "I brought my own. I don't want to, you know." disrespect BYOG I, I did I bought, I bought my dark skin I had a Barbie doll I had a uh, I had a um, uh, like Korean and black I just I said Blasian and I explained to him I said this is a new this new joint I said I know you got the, the blonde bunnies but nah. this is the new the mix the Blasian the chocolate going yeah, you gotta know where this is going right so what happened was I took that and did my own version of it at my crib so we would the, have the formula. Top, we would have topless volleyball on Mondays <laughs> You know, and that went great until we invited the wrong person, the dude that was just like this. The you know, creep. made everybody, we had a creeper. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, But other than that, it would be parties. Like, I remember partying with Bobby Brown, vintage Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown is, is beatboxing while Michael Bay is over in the corner. Mm. And just, you know, fly, fly stuff. I remember uh, doing karaoke. We did this thing for Puff, two, 2000. Did a party for Puff. I'm at a party in Philly. Puff said, I spent a million and a half dollars for this party. I said, what? I said, buddy, you come to L.A., I throw your party for 400 bucks. It will rival this. Not on the scale, but it will rival it. Quality of individuals. Quality. So he called me, yo, Playboy, you know how Puff is. Yo, Playboy, make that happen. You know, make it happen. You talk all that, you talk all that shit, make it happen, Playboy. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Get in my phone. I got 250 people in my small house that is vintage. Women that are very beautiful, but not too tight, but not slutty. Because it's early. It's during mm -hmm. the day. So, you know, it's during the day. It's 2, 2 o'clock. So I said, where you at? He gets there like 2 o'clock. And he's like, that's the girl from that show. I said, I said yeah. Yeah, we all hang together. We ain't got no money, but we all hang together. That's right. Yeah. I said, look in the corner. There's Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's cola, four hundred dollars, and the party was amazing. Hold on, let me back up. Let me say, at the party, puff, and it's we ain't going nowhere day. And then the, on the corner, standing on uh, on the side of the uh, in the house, is a dude with a green jacket, jump like a sweat jacket on. No one knew who he was really. His name was Jay Z. Missy Elliott had a room. Mm. She's amazing. As I'm walking into my garage, it's two dudes, one tall, one smaller, the short one. Like, yo, B, it's like this all the time. Like, girls, like this all the time. I say, yeah, who are you? Oh, we did Neptunes. I say, yeah, I heard of you. What's your name? Yo, Pharrell. I say, yeah, get on in there, man. To this day, if you ask Ben mm -hmm. about that party, it was amazing. It's now, so there tight. are elements to the party as it gets later mm -hmm. that we do say, okay, it's about 9, 30, 10. We're going to ask all the Christians. <laughs> So go ahead and grab Either the you Bibles. Or you ain't. <laughs> grab the Bibles. And ask but so you, you don't way. do that no more. The, wow. Them days is done. There's no. There's times when we do that. We just do it like you know, more because there was a period. Yeah. It was every month. It was, it was every day. Yeah. For, it, it was every day. 1999. We threw a party every single day on the, in the summer for my sister. We threw a party every day. Now with camera phones, etc. People saying we just got to be a little little different. Hey, more selective. Patriots, I've got a hot one just in on the diddler. So this. Ooh, ah, ah, I can barely, it's so hot. Sorry about that. Here it goes. All right, folks. Whoosh. First off the top, there is a swirly-whirly rumor going around a video of a call from Diddy in prison. It's an impersonator. It's fake. Stay woke. Yeah, not that. Also, just saw a video of Busta Rhymes. They asked him about Diddy. He's like, yeah, I don't really like to comment on that on business i don't you know i wish him well i god bless everyone at what what busta one of the heaven growl growl like a tumbling dragon what you're pretty quiet you're pretty quiet busta on this so that reads sus to me 
Keep it moving, Sammy. Now, here's what my word on the street is, folks, is that all these allegations are coming out. There's over 120 Diddy cases. We saw the 13-year-old that just happened. My sources are telling me it's possible the whole music industry could go down, crumble overnight if all of this gets leaked, and it is. Here's a story, a personal one. I have, I knew these girls. They were two models who went to a Diddy party, okay, in Florida. Two models, right? They both went into the VIP. They were handed bottles of champagne, right? Now, one of the models said, as soon as I drank this champagne, I started to feel a weird kind of buzz, like a very cartoonish buzz is what she said. And then all of a sudden she got very sick, was not feeling good. Next thing she knows, she's getting all violent with a bodyguard. They separated her and her sister. She's never been violent in her life. She's getting violent, starts assaulting a security guard or whatever. They hit her over the head with a flashlight. She wakes up the next day in Dade County jail and was arrested for assault. Had no idea what happened. Her sister went, bailed her out. And she says, actually, that saved them from being taken away by the diddler. I say all this because I had a very personal friend and a little birdie tell me of a friend who was partying with Diddy, right? And she also drank some of the champagne and became violent. So there's something in this little, the GHB juice box that he's handing out that's making people violent and crazy. And Diddy, he's a sick puppy. Now, keep it moving, Sam. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, we've got that. Yes, uh, yes. Okay, guys, Uncle Ron, people are telling me he died of a heart attack or pneumonia. RIP Uncle Ron, but go to his page. Keep asking his family what happened. Keep pressuring him. They have limited and turned off comments. People are saying to respect their privacy, but I think they know something and they're scared. All right, because Uncle Ron's last video just, it said, I might not be here in 24 hours. That's literally what he said. This is his last 24 hours. He told us he wouldn't be here anymore. So please protect Gene. Protect Gene Deal. He's one of the last truth seekers we have in this. Okay, keep it moving, Sam. I got that. Yep, yep. Oh, and this is crazy. Did he? was on a TV show. You guys have probably seen this clip circulating online with Usher. He's like, what's up, Usher? Why don't we hang out anymore? You know why you don't hang out anymore. But they ask Diddy, before you die, what would your last words be? What does Diddy say? I did it. Holy cow. I did it is what he said. Now, there's videos that are going to come out. I'm telling you, my inside sources are telling me they could include Dwayne Martin, Will Smith, J-Lo, Leo, Ashton Kutcher, guys, will go down. Watch him. But here's my question. Why are the Hollywood elite so quiet on this? Any interviewer you see asks, what do you think about the Diddy stuff? Oh, I don't know. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. So Hollywood, your silence is speaking volumes to myself and all my loyal patriots out there. Check in, patriots from around the world. It is not safe for me to be reporting this, but my love goes out to you, and my dream is to one day be a stand-up comedian. Secret Service Sam, over and out. Samson for president. Thank you. There is a third arrest that is coming. There's two that's already down. There's a raid that's about to go on. And on top of that, it's somebody that has something to do with an affidavit that I have already released. I am telling you, we know that it's coming. I knew it was coming when I made sure there were sworn and legal affidavits already ready six to eight months ago. I'm telling you right now that they're about to grab them and they're about to announce it. When they announce it, we got a problem. We got a big problem. Because there's... There's ways that this is about to go. I think a lot of you guys are... are, are, are everybody's like, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. You're, we're ready until it's happening. And then everybody's like, well, I wasn't ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a lot of that. There's no, there's no other way to get ready. There's no other way to prepare. 
there's no protocol for what's about to happen the world is going to crumble when they see this next arrest in the meantime there's going to be deaths distractions and fires to hide evidence watch for it ask questions demand answers so there's been a big development in Diddy's situation. The judge ordered that any famous person or celebrity... There is a third arrest that is coming. There's two that's already down. There's a raid that's about to go on. And on top of that, it's somebody that has something to do with an affidavit that I have already released. I am telling you, we know that it's coming. I knew it was coming when I made sure there were sworn and legal affidavits already ready six to eight months ago. I'm telling you right now, that they're about to grab them and they're about to announce it. When they announce it, we got a problem. We got a big problem. Because there's, there's ways that this is about to go. I think a lot of you guys are, 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 are everybody's like, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. You're, we're ready until it's happening. And then everybody's like, well, I wasn't ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of that. There's no, there's no other way to get ready. There's no other way to prepare. There's no protocol for what's about to happen. The world is going to crumble when they see this next arrest. In the meantime, there's going to be deaths, distractions, and fires to hide evidence. Watch for it, ask questions, demand answers. Teams of people were involved in this, all because there was something about the lie that gave them an advantage. And that is the way the world works. That is the way it will always work, and it has always worked. There were other people pulling the strings to make Diddy who Diddy was. Attorneys, investors, labels, like promoters. There were all these people who were who had to keep the secret. And all they cared about was, hey, keep the guy happy, he keeps producing. Keep the guy happy, he keeps quiet. Keep the guy doing this. Whew. Those parties, those, those the freak offs, I can almost guarantee you, Diddy did not put together one detail about any one of those things. It was five or seven other people that knew he liked them. They were the ones that did all the work. They were the ones that found the girls, found the drugs, prepped the hotel rooms, cleaned the hotel rooms, wiped the blood off the coffee table. Nipsey Hussle, that the man was spiritually connected. He was a child of God. He had gotten in front of Puffy one time and he told Puff that he was putting out this music and I guess Puff was helping him in some kind of way. And he said something. And that what he said was, I need my music and my album to have the same feel of that life after death, like Biggie's album. Now, you're taking a spiritual person who's asking for something. He said, I wanted that same feel as life after death. That same feel was that, that Biggie got murdered and he went on to sell about 10 million albums or 10 million copies. I was saying, you got to watch what you say to demons because it just might come true. You just got to watch what you say, brother, because God said that you say it by mouth, you believe it in thy heart and it shall happen. And when you got a strong, strong spirit, and you that type of person, you got to watch what you say out your mouth, man. I feel like his money is probably like quickly evaporating like right now. Bad. And I feel like if he does 15 years, by the time he gets out of that shit, he's going to be no really fucked financially. Again. Then you're a regular ass dude, but you can't even afford fucking security or whatever. Let's be real. It's like, it's going to be very hard for you're him. You're looking too. like Brian Pumper. Like his great talent has always been being able to find artists and then develop them and turn them into stars, right? But he needed to, he needed the people around him for that the be, company, the business. Yeah, but it's going to be. Can you imagine Puff getting egged on the corner like Brian Pumper oh 20 God. years later? I mean,. It's got to like if you're going to end up in that situation, that means that you've basically burnt bridges with every single person who could have possibly helped you out. Like, I believe Barack Obama got a tape. Yeah, he's playing hide the hot dog. I know Jennifer Lopez has multiple tapes. Oh, yeah. Oof. I know Beyonce got a tape. Damn, I definitely know they probably recycled some old Stevie J and Eve stuff. Yeah. I know Drake got a tape. I know Rihanna got a tape. I know Chris Brown's on one of them tapes. I know Trey Songs has been like a supporting actor in many freak off film. 
definitely Usher. I think what would shock people are the politicians and the royals that are oh, yeah. on that tape. And I'm still trying to figure out when Harry and Meghan are going to be honest yeah. about their freak off tape. Yeah. The royal family has many times at Ditty Party. Ray J in the building, he has his own news channel. Yeah, if you guys you make guys. sure you turn in. Love the fit, man. Wow, thanks, man. Of course, no, man, good. you know. So he was so, just saying, just you've been to the party, you know it's all white, baby. You know it's all white, yeah. You ain't been in no party. Yeah, it's all white, you, nigga, you playing. You <laughs> yeah. ain't been in no party. Dancing, nigga, dancing. No, Still, no, da no. So, so what you saying is, though, honestly, like, since we are on the topic, you you have been to no 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 no, uh, no, no. actual it's, no 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 bro freak you're, off. you're lying. Love and Wait a minute, going wrong. I, I, we keep going viral too much, mm -hmm. and we want to eat off. Who of me? It. You do too. No, I do. Yeah, no, <laughs> the I only do, person I, going I do. viral is me. And and no, I'm I telling go, you, I, I, no, you don't. Okay. Okay. Can we do a vote? Can we vote? How many more times has Orlando been viral than Ray J? Oh, oh. It's not even a comparison. Oh, comparison. You're the little homie. Okay, but I'm the big homie now. This shit just got dark. Y'all see what Jaguar Wright said about Drake? And as messy as, as Drake is right now, I can almost bet that there's somebody that wants to turn his faucet off. <laughs> Because if y'all think Diddy is a mess, <laughs> Drake, he was being groomed to be next in line, see? What happens when the real details of what happened to Triple X? This is the crazy thing. A few days ago, Jaguar Wright said Jay-Z picked Kendrick to get at Drake. OVO fans was eating it up. They said Jaguar Wright ain't been wrong again, all that different stuff. So do we feel the same way now? Do we still believe everything the Jaguar right is saying or do y'all only believe it when it's beneficial to who you like? Because first of all, I would not be surprised if this is accurate. I mean, I believe beat the grams. Do y'all think Jaguar right is still telling the whole truth? Because you did a few days ago. Just saying. Oprah Winfrey is a media mogul, talk show host, actress, producer, and philanthropist who's impacted the entertainment industry. She's best known for hosting The Oprah Winfrey Show, which aired for 25 seasons and became the highest rated television talk show in the US. Her show covered various topics, from social issues to self-improvement, and featured interviews with influential guests. While Oprah does seem like a perfect person to cover up Diddy's mess or expose him, it's unclear which path she's on as her silence over the issue has been likened to a graveyard. So, what relationship exists between the two stars? How is this link going to affect Oprah? Let's find out. Diddy and Oprah Winfrey's long-standing friendship. Diddy and Oprah Winfrey, two of the most influential figures in entertainment and media, have been linked together recently due to their long-standing friendship. Amidst the controversies surrounding Diddy, their connection has sparked interest and curiosity, Diddy and Oprah's friendship spans decades, with their first public appearance dating back to 2003. At the Time 100 Gala, they were photographed exchanging warm smiles, setting the tone for their enduring relationship. Over the years, they have attended various high-profile events, including the Met Gala, Grammy Awards, and Oprah's renowned charity functions. Their friendship is built on mutual respect and admiration for each other's work. Oprah has publicly praised Diddy's entrepreneurial spirit and philanthropic efforts, while Diddy has often credited Oprah as a source of inspiration and guidance. In a 2014 interview with CNN, Diddy expressed his gratitude for Oprah's mentorship, stating, She's been a huge influence on me. She's taught me a lot about giving back. Diddy and Oprah are committed to philanthropy, particularly education and empowerment initiatives. In 2011, Diddy donated $1 million to the Children's Hope Foundation, which Oprah supports. They have also collaborated on various charity events, including the 2012 A Night to Benefit Gala, raising funds for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. 
Beyond philanthropy, Diddy and Oprah have explored business collaborations. In 2012, Oprah's own network partnered with Diddy's Revolt TV to produce exclusive content. This strategic partnership aimed to promote diverse storytelling and empower emerging talent. Over the years, Diddy and Oprah have made numerous public appearances together, solidifying their status as close friends. One notable moment came in 2013 when Diddy sat down with Oprah for her Next Chapter series. Diddy opened up about his life, career, and philanthropic endeavors in this intimate conversation. Oprah's thoughtful questioning allowed Diddy Nobody know why, but Puff had an obsession with him for whatever reason it was, because he started wanting to act. He started wanting to rap. He had an obsession so bad <laughs> that at his Grammy Award winning speech, he used the same speech that Pac used. That shit is crazy. So when Mama say I'm obsessed with talking about Puff and telling y'all the truth, telling y'all the truth, Who's obsessed with who? Pac had Sarah before Puff. Allegedly, he had Sally before Puff. And Kim had an obsession or liked Pac so much, she on a red carpet with Tupac shirt on. Who's obsessed with who? Well, 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 what do we have here? Pink no cane. This has set up written all over it. I'm about to tell you what it is, where it came from, and I don't like it. It seems like everything is bringing us back to Diddy. This is where we saw that pink no cane before. Back in March, there was an article that talked about a lawsuit naming Young in Miami as being the one who flew Diddy this dangerous rug. Now, the slang term is Okana Rosada, Pink Powder, you see the names. And this is the one my, my Miami and Florida people told me, Tusi, I believe they call it. It is a synthetic rug that can cause hallucinogenic effects and might not even be no cane sometimes. That's why I call it no cane. Addictive. Pay attention to that. What is it normally mixed with? Any of these. Now, if we want to connect this to Mohawk Diddy, we could say, hey, maybe back um, when he was date, when Leon was dating Naomi Campbell, maybe that's they got him hooked on it then. I don't know, but let's pay attention because if the Diddler was setting that up now, knowing that he is the only name tied to Pink No Cane. They setting each other up, y'all, I think. I'm out. We're learning more about the death of One Direction singer Liam Payne. A toxicology report showing that Payne had, quote, pink cocaine in his system. The initial report from his autopsy coming after the singer fell to his death from a third floor balcony at a hotel in Argentina last week. So what is pink cocaine? Dr. Peter Chin Hong is here and... Peter, uh, let's just ask the question up front. Uh, what is it? It's not a single drug, is it? No, it's not, Austin. It's a cocktail of drugs, and that's what makes it really dangerous. It's not standardized, so you don't really know what you're getting. It has no cocaine in it, per se, but it has a combination of other drugs. Some of the common ones include uh, methamphetamine, which is a stimulant or upper but also two hallucinogenic drugs like ketamine, famous for uh, implicated in Matthew Perry's death, and of course, um, ecstasy or MDMA. Both of those, ketamine and MDMA, can make you see things when, you're not, when they're not there they're, or feel things, they're hallucinogenic. Um, and ketamine in high doses can make you unconscious. Talk to me more about the makeup of pink cocaine. So you say you don't exactly know what's going to be in each batch. How much of a difference could there be depending on your geography or depending on simply which batch you get? 
a, a huge difference. Uh, there's a huge difference in price. There's a huge difference in the components. Uh, it's a new generation designer drug. So um, it's kind of a grab bag. There are a lot of homemade recipes um, uh, available online. Um, had its origins in the 70s, but didn't really pick up until 2010. Between Diddy and Epstein, there's, there's, there's probably several thousand hours of footage here. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird that the people on those videos are lecturing the rest of us about our moral failings, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. What is that? Well, I mean, part of how they deflect attention from themselves is by you know, criticizing the morals of others. Yes. It's sort of like a preemptive moral strike. Those who are saying Trump is a threat to democracy are themselves actually the threat to democracy. It feels like we're getting to a place where the rest of us know too much. Like, what happens next now that we know all this? The kidnapper shown us his face. Like, what happens? Well. I think if, uh, if Trump wins, we can do some house cleaning and shed light on things. <laughs>